Um, okay, Jeremy, uh, you're a keen observer of politics in Israel, uh, but you're also an observant Jew. So considering the 67 victory and its, and its after effects, do you feel that framing Israeli politics in religious terms is valid, or perhaps even more valid than a strictly secular, secular approach? Do you see a religious perspective on Israeli history and politics being manifested today, actually? Thank you for the question. I want to start out by thanking uh, Breaking Israel News, Israel 365, all of our sponsors, Rabbi Tuli, Mayan, everyone that's involved with the organization, the sponsors. I also want to thank all of the panelists for your amazing insights. I also want to thank you, the people in the audience, for coming to hear us. And for those of you that are not here as Israelis, I want to welcome you to Jerusalem the undivided eternal capital of our homeland. Thank you. Now, to answer that question, it's always been difficult for me to understand those that try to separate the secular and religious framework of the foundation of this country. It was the secular people who founded this country who decided to revive the language of Hebrew the language of the Bible. That wasn't the religious people. That was the secular people. There were people who objected. They said, no, let's keep speaking Yiddish. You know? And it was actually the secular people who adopted the religious narrative and said, let's bring back the language of the Bible. The parliament that M.K. Yehuda Glick sits in called the Knesset is not just a place where you go and gather. It was named after the great assembly on Sheikh Knesset Abdullah during the time that we lived here in our homeland over 2,500 years ago when we had the temple in Jerusalem. Now, what is the symbol that they decided to choose for the state of Israel? They decided to choose the menorah from the temple. They decided to choose for the national anthem that the final verse would be that we want to be a free people in our homeland in Jerusalem. Now, beyond that, we have the flag, which has the colors of the talit, which has the Star of David, the Jew who came and conquered Jerusalem so that we could go ahead and create our temple here. Everything is centered around Jerusalem and the secular narrative is pretty much the religious narrative without a hand covering. It's the same stuff, they just might not observe Sabbath the way that you and I do. So when I go ahead and I think about what that connection is and how that manifests today, because we do have a different secular generation today than we did on the foundation of the state. And yes, some of them have some different views and some of them have different, um, I would say, approaches towards the connection that we have between religion and state. But yet, what are the four biblical, non-biblical, sorry, the four non-biblical holidays that we celebrate in Israel? Holocaust, Remembrance Day, Israeli Memorial Day, right, Yom Hazikaron, Israel Independence Day, and Jerusalem Day. And there's this sort of feeling that you get when you go through the educational system here, where the teachers sort of guide you between those four holidays. And I wish I had the time, and I know that I don't, to go through each one of them and their significance, but to spend some time on Jerusalem, since that's the question, and that's the hour that we're in right now. The fact that the pinnacle is Jerusalem is not it's not uh, by accident. It's not a coincidence. We went through everything that we went through over the last 2,000 years so that we could come back here and be in our home. Now, Zionism is an interesting word, and I, I challenge my secular friends that try to have a revisionist outlook in terms of the foundation of the country and the future that they want. I ask them this, how can you call yourself a Zionist and ask to divide Zion?
It's an impossible thing. Now, to finish up, I want to um, address something. There was a waiver that was signed, and uh, I know a lot of people are upset about that. Now, we heard a lot about the West Bank, right, from the mayor of Shiloh. We heard a lot about the, the Six-Day War. We heard a lot about what those 1967 borders were, what the Six-Day War, you know, symbolized. I'd like to take a step back. I'd like to see a time where before we recognize, you know, some 67 lines, let's recognize the 1949 lines. I would like to call on all of the friends of the state of Israel to recognize Jerusalem as our capital. It's not our capital from 1967, and it's not our capital from 1948 or 1949. Jerusalem is our capital for 3,000 years, practically. And it's about time that you guys recognize that and stop making excuses. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.